Let's be frank with ourselves. Life is getting more hectic and demanding all the time. And we aren't getting any younger. It seems that there's only one way to cope. Multitasking. A stupidly high amount of individuals all over the internet, known as gurus, life hackers, and clowns, are trying to convince you of that very fact. The idea behind it is that it increases the productivity and the efficiency of the individual. Even though thousands of unofficial and unqualified people support the idea, similar to flat earthers or moon truthers, it's still just a theory with no major studies behind it. Ironically, the whole concept can be compared to juggling balls. Juggling one ball or one task is relatively easy and simple for your brain to focus on. Two balls split your brain focus, making one have more mistakes. And three or more balls is chaotic and it's going to be a mess, no matter how good one is initially. Now, to truly debunk the false idea of multitasking, let's start off with one ball and talk about what is multitasking and what happens within our brain. Secondly, let's add our second ball and talk about how multitasking affects people in their daily lives. And lastly, as we add our third ball and as it becomes chaotic, let's discuss the major impacts of multitasking. Now then, as we throw our very first ball up into the air, let's ask the question, what is multitasking? According to journalist Kristen Rosen, the term was first used in the 1960s to describe computer performance. The human brain, however, is not a computer and the definition changed with it over time. Today, multitasking can be defined as the ability to do multiple things simultaneously by Cambridge Dictionary and is typically used to describe human beings. Moreover, unlike computers, the human brain has a very small attention span. In fact, the APA or American Psychological Association model visual attention like being like a spotlight. It can only be shown in one direction at any given moment. Our primary focus, what we're paying most attention to, is like the bright lit center of that flashlight. Visual attention can also be modeled as a camera lens. One can choose to narrow in their focus and concentrate on details, or narrow out to be aware of multiple things simultaneously. But narrowing in and out at the exact same time is physically impossible. Even though in this context, the question should be clear cut, multitasking is impossible. But for some reason, our brain still encourages the action of multitasking. Nicholas Carr states, our brain itself encourages the action of multitasking because it craves information. Even though in practicality, it's not that good at processing data at the speed and intensity that we find ourselves today. This is partially due to the fact that our short-term working memory, or working memory for short, has a very small capacity. Working memory essentially is the context of one's consciousness at any given moment. What you're aware of right now is part of your working memory. What you're not aware of is not part of your working memory. In general, the whole concept can be described in the 1950s book, The Magical Number 7. In that book, the author states that one's working memory can only hold around seven pieces of information at any given moment whether that be the names of seven different people or a seven digit number. When someone takes in too much information too suddenly, what happens is information starts entering and exiting the brain at the exact same time. Now this phenomenon causes quite literally cognitive overload. In this situation, someone can't truly think or focus on anything because their brain doesn't have the function or capacity to do so. Now that we know why we multitask and how it affects our brain, let's throw our second ball up into the air and discuss how multitasking affects us in our daily lives. According to those gurus that I mentioned earlier, multitasking can be categorized into three different ways that we use it in a daily routine. First is doing two tasks simultaneously. Second is moving back and forth from one task to another. 
And lastly, it's doing a number of tasks in rapid succession. Now, most people, including you and me, multitask in one of these forms every single day. Professor McFawn often states that we multitask in a daily routine because we crave information and FOMO. Wait, what's FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. We fear in missing out in tweets, Instagram notifications, text messages, and emails. FOMO is also the reason why most people, including myself, check my Instagram feed while I'm on the toilet or watch cute cat videos during college lectures. Now, because of FOMO, we are constantly connected to the internet through digital distractions that we receive through our smartphone, smartwatches, and computers. Now, this constant connection isn't inherently a bad thing, but we fail to look at the consequences. One prime example will be attention span. Even though multitasking has been on the rise, attention span, however, has not. Elizabeth Mosgrove states that the attention span of millennials has dropped to eight seconds, while the attention span of Generation Z, my generation, has dropped to a measly 2.8 seconds. She states that this drastic decrease in attention span is directly correlated to the increase of multitasking, whether that be through technology or other means. On top of this, my gen, my generation, Gen Z, spends at least six hours on our, on our phone every day because of FOMO and other distractions that we get and our lack of focus that we have on a task at hand. Now, I'm not trying to discredit people's ways of life because I spend at least seven hours on my phone every day. But what I am saying is when people multitask to quench their boredom or to increase their productivity, the exact opposite happens because multitasking causes people to be distracted or causes people to not focus on the task they're truly doing. Now that we know why we multitask and what happens in our brain, let's move on and talk about how multitasking has had a major impact. Now, let's throw our third ball up in the air and discuss the chaotic side of multitasking. Up until now, we're mainly focusing on the more goofy or fun aspects of multitasking, such as FOMO or attention span. But we need to realize it has the potential to kill millions. Multitasking at your home or at your desk is fine and relatively has few harm. But engaging in distractive actions behind a steering wheel not only puts the driver, but everyone else on the road at risk. The CDC states, nine people die every day because of inattentive driving. Meanwhile, another 1,000 people get injured because they chose to take their eyes off the road. Even the most mundane action of listening to music, talking to a passenger, or daydreaming can be very distracting to a driver. Car accidents happen within seconds, and a driver is expected to react instantaneously. These car activities that we participate in for fun undermine the small reaction time. The CDC has stated 100,000 people get injured every day or every year because they are related to inattentive car accidents or car accidents where people don't pay attention and 9,000 of them don't come back home alive. People buy into the false theory of multitasking. They believe that they can text and drive at the same time. But they need to realize when they multitask, they're distracting themselves and causing 100,000 people to get injured and 9,000 people to die. Now, as we near the end of our show, we can look back and see that juggling was a perfect analogy for multitasking. Because juggling one ball is easy, two balls is relatively hard, and three balls, 
is chaotic. As you just saw, when I tried to split my focus between each three of those thoughts, I failed. And multitasking does the same thing to your brain. At the end of the day, multitasking is just a parasite that latches onto your thought process and only lets go when it's too late. So next time, when you think of multitasking, think about the consequences that come with the theory of multitasking.